You must have heard in the news or from a friend or relative in the last few months that interest rates are rising all around the world and that your country's central bank is to blame. With inflation out of control, central banks boosted interest rates to attempt to control it. But what exactly is a central bank? How do they decide how to modify a country's interest rate? Most importantly, how will this influence your bank account? A central bank, according to European Central Bank, is a public entity that handles a country's or group of nations currency and controls the money supply. Many central banks' primary goal is price stability. A central bank, in other terms, is an agency that regulates the quantity of money circulating inside a country. In reality, this means that the primary purpose of a central bank is to keep inflation under control. Inflation happens when the costs of products and services rise, implying that you can buy fewer items for the same amount of money. To prevent this, a central bank employs monetary policy. Monetary policy is the set of measures available to a central bank in order to regulate the overall money supply and encourage economic growth. In nations such as the United States, the Federal Reserve implements monetary policy with a dual objective, aiming to maximize employment while maintaining inflation levels steady at a goal of roughly 2% per year. So, how can a central bank keep inflation under control? Before I answer that, allow me to welcome you to Economic News. Be sure to like the video if you are enjoying it so far and subscribe with all notifications turned on by ringing the bell icon so that you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, let us get back to the video. Interest rates are the primary tactic they employ. A central bank is not the same as a commercial bank. A consumer cannot open an account at a central bank. Instead, it serves as the bank's bank. Commercial banks have accounts with a central bank through which they can lend and borrow money. By modifying the interest rates that the central bank charges commercial banks, they indirectly influence their interest rates that customers pay on loans such as mortgages or automotive loans. For example, if the central bank raises its policy interest rate to 5%, commercial banks would charge at least 5% to end users. Otherwise, the commercial bank would be better off simply lending its money to the central bank, where there is no chance of default. Reserve requirements are another approach for central banks to implement monetary policy. The minimum amount of money that banks must have on hand as a proportion of total deposits is known as reserve requirements. In the United States, for example, the reserve requirement is normally 10%, which means that for every $100 put into an account, the bank must retain at least $10 in cash or other highly liquid assets. The central bank can adjust the amount of loans commercial banks can provide for a certain level of deposits by increasing or reducing reserve requirement. Changing the reserve requirements has the same impact as changing interest rates. Therefore, we'll concentrate on interest rates for the rest of the video. Monetary policies are classified as either contractionary or expansionary. Contractionary policy is when the central bank raises interest rates while restricting the surplus money supply in order to impede economic development and reduce inflation. Expansionary policy, on the other hand, happens during times of economic slowdown or recession. Expansionary policy stimulates economic activity. Saving money becomes less appealing when interest rates fall, motivating customers to spend their money while increasing the number of loans and the amount borrowed. Monetary policy has numerous effects on the actual economy. To begin with, an expansionary monetary policy reduces unemployment while low interest rates boost economic activity and job market expansion. Second, monetary policy can influence exchange rates between local and foreign currencies. As interest rates are reduced, owning local bonds becomes less appealing and investors will instead purchase international bonds. To purchase foreign bonds, they must swap their home currency for foreign currency, causing the exchange rate to fall. Perhaps most critically, monetary policy influences inflation. People have more money to spend when interest rates are low because they can borrow more money. Depreciation of the currency also raises the pricing of imported products, further fueling inflation. 
while raising interest rates reduces the pace of inflation through the same mechanisms. Thus, in essence, a central bank manages interest rates to try to avoid or reduce inflation. But what causes inflation? In general, there are two types of inflation, cost push inflation and demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation occurs when the growth in demand for goods and services exceeds the available supply. People can borrow a lot of money if interest rates are low, for example. As consumers spend this money in the actual economy, prices rise because companies are driven to raise the cost of their products in response to growing demand. Cost push inflation, on the other hand, is driven by an increase in production costs, which leads to increased consumer prices. Assume that the government imposed tariffs on imported products. This raises the price of the items. Businesses will raise consumer prices to maintain their profit margins. Even if there is no change in demand, this generates inflation. The remedy to inflation, whether generated by demand pool or cost push inflation, is the same. If demand becomes unsustainable, the central bank will hike interest rates to bring it down to more sustainable levels. Even if the economy is suffering from cost push inflation, the central bank will raise interest rates in order to limit demand. Prices will decline if demand falls far enough, since firms will be obliged to lower their prices even if manufacturing costs are greater. Finally, central banks operate as a lender of a last resort in addition to managing interest rates. The discount window of the Federal Reserve is a lending tool that provides liquidity to financial institutions in times of need. The Federal Reserve gives banks access to loans via the discount window which are often at lower than market rates. Banks may borrow cash through the discount window for up to 90 days, with the goal of assisting with liquidity problems. The Federal Reserve also offers an emergency lending facility, called a primary credit facility, which permits more troubled institutions to borrow cash at somewhat higher interest rates than those borrowing through the discount window. During the 2008 financial crisis, the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States provided money to American banks such as Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, and Citigroup. Similarly, the Bank of England in the United Kingdom lent about £37 billion to Lloyds Bank in 2008. Many economists think that without this assistance, several if not all of these banks would have failed. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a comment down below if you agree with central banks or if they have too much control. Let us know how we should regulate them. Also, do check out our other videos on the channel if you have time. Take care now and see you in the next video.